right, guys, chapter 7, section 1, structures and organelles. So we are talking about cells again. Essential questions. What are the structures of a typical eukaryotic cell and what are their functions? And what are the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells? Vocab. You should have this done. I'm thinking vocab quiz on Thursday. So if you don't have it done now, get it done. Cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. The environment enclosed by the plasma membrane is a semi-fluid material called the cytoplasm. In prokaryotes, all of the chemical processes of the cell take place directly in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, these processes take place in organelles that are found inside the cytoplasm. The cytoskeleton is a supporting network of long, thin protein fibers that form a framework for the cell and provide anchor points for the organelles. Microtubules are long, hollow protein cylinders that form a rigid skeleton for the cell, and they act as a highway so that substances can be moved around the cell. Microfilaments are a thin protein thread that helps give the cell its shape and enable part of the entire part or the entire cell to move. So microtubules are like the infrastructure, like the uh, the metal uh, of a of a large building. Okay, the microfilaments are like the, I don't know, like the cart that they use to deliver the mail. Okay, so those are uh, slightly different, but they're both part of the cytoskeleton. The nucleus, this is the most important part of the cell. It contains most of the cell's DNA, which stores information used to make proteins that determine the cell's growth, function, and reproduction. So they basically control the actions of the entire cell. It is surrounded by a double membrane called a nuclear envelope. That envelope just keeps all of the DNA inside the nucleus where it is safe and can't be damaged. Ribosomes are organelles that manufacture proteins. They are not membrane bound like other organelles. Uh, they are produced inside the nucleus by a structure called the nucleolus. Um, prokaryotic cells also have ribosomes because all cells need protein. The endoplasmic reticulum or ER, is a membrane system of folded sacs in interconnected channels that serve as the site for proteins and lipid synthesis. There are two types, rough and smooth. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is where proteins are made, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is where lipids are made. The rough ER has ribosomes stuck to it. Okay, they are embedded, um, so the rough ER actually looks bumpy if you look at it under an electron microscope. The Golgi apparatus, also called the Golgi body, is a flattened stack of membranes that modifies, sorts, and packages proteins. So it gets those from the ER, and it kind of changes them up a little bit, adds a little razzle-dazzle to them, and then ships them out. The proteins are packaged into sacs called vesicles, which can then fuse to the plasma membrane and release those proteins to the environment so they can make the proteins, um, or sorry, the, the ER makes the proteins, they ship it to the, the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus gets it to the cell membrane, then the proteins are expelled into the environment. Vacuoles. A vacuole is a membrane-bound sac used for temporary storage. Okay, this is where if the cell has excess water or excess food, they store it there. Okay, um, it's temporary. They're used for food, enzymes, or waste. And these large vacuoles are only found in plant cells because they have to store lots and lots of water because they can't just walk to the nearest pond or river and get a drink when they are thirsty. Lysosomes are a special kind of vesicle that contain substances that digest uh, extra or worn out organelles and food particles. They also digest bacteria or viruses that make their way inside the cell. So they're kind of like a second line of defense. So if something bad gets in, the lysosome's like, okay, guys, we're going to take care of this here and now. We're going to get rid of this guy. Okay, So they're kind of like the, uh, the enforcer of the cell. Okay, They take care of the bad guys. Centrioles. Um, these are structures that are used in animal cells during cell division. Okay, They help divide the DNA. Uh, and we're going to talk more uh, about them later on this year whenever we talk about cell division. The mitochondria, you have probably heard it is the powerhouse of the cell. Well, this is the organelle that takes glucose 
from uh, the environment, from the, uh, the bloodstream if it's an animal, or from the chloroplast if it is a plant, and it converts it into a form of usable energy. Okay, our bodies, we need glucose, but we can't just use that for energy. The mitochondria has to break it down so that we can actually use it. The mitochondria have an outer and inner membrane. Uh, the inner membrane is very folded, okay, and that increased the amount of surface area for chemical reactions to occur so that they can break down those sugar molecules much more quickly. Chloroplast, these are found in uh, photosynthetic organisms, all right, so organisms that make their own food. Um, plant cells and some other eukaryotes contain chloroplast, which capture light and convert it into chemical energy in a process called photosynthesis. We're going to take a lot of time and talk about photosynthesis. Um, they are composed of multiple sacs, uh, like discs, called thylakoids, which contain the pigment that actually captures that sunlight. Okay, and that is what makes them green. The cell wall. Plant cells have a cell wall. It is a thick, rigid mesh of fibers that surrounds the outside of the plasma membrane. It's found only in plant cells. Um, it protects the cell and gives it structure, and it's made from a carbohydrate called cellulose. So it's a sugar molecule bonded to a sugar molecule bonded to a sugar molecule bonded to a sugar molecule over and over and over and over and over. Okay, we are not able to break down cellulose, but it is a major part of most plants, and that's what gives them the crunch when we bite into them. Cilia and flagella. Cilia are short, numerous projections that look like hair, and they move in tandem like oars in a rowboat, and they help move the, the cell around. Flagella are longer, and usually there's only one or two per cell, and they move in a whip-like motion. Uh, both of them are made of microtubules, and they are used for movement. Comparing cells. Plant cells um, have some different organelles than animal cells. Plant cells have chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll. They contain that large vacuole for holding on to water, and they have a cell wall. Animal cells don't have those because they don't need them. Organelles at work. An understanding of different organelles allows for an understanding of cellular processes. Protein synthesis, uh, this is a process that we're going to talk about in more detail later on this year. It begins in the nucleus with the DNA. Okay, a copy of the DNA is made in the form of RNA, and it goes to a ribosome. Okay, and that ribosome reads the directions and makes a protein. Okay, that protein will be made by a ribosome that is stuck to the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum takes that protein uh, and ships it out to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus modifies it a little bit, gives it some tweaks, and then ships it out to wherever it needs to go. And that's it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know.